You are listening to Beaver Tales, Volume 1, The Secret Laboratory, by Studio Mike. Chapter 12, The Party. As we approach Shimmery Pond, Pop-Pop is standing there, waiting for us. Where have you been? The old lady is pulling her fur out in there! I'm sorry, Pop-Pop. I was just missing Pa. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot how much he used to love spoiling you guys on your birthday. It's okay, Pop-Pop. It just makes me a little sad. I miss him so much. Hope hugs him, and they share a nice moment. Well, everyone is inside and waiting for you. Pop-Pop opens the back door, and we slide inside. We make it into the den. The party is in full effect. I can see Billy Bop with a blindfold on. He is swinging a stick at the pinata and isn't even close. Everyone is having a good laugh. There you are. Are you okay? Where have you been? I'm fine. I was so worried. I was afraid something might have happened to you. She says she's fine. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the birthday girl. I'm doing okay. I just need to clean up quickly. She heads off into her bedroom and closes the door. What happened to your pants? It's a long story, I say. What's a long story? A girl asks. I turn and it's not a girl. It's my girl. Well, not officially as we've never actually talked about it. But standing there in a cute red dress with a small blue bow on her head is Pumpkin Bumpkin. She looks terrific and smells incredible. She reaches out and holds my paw. You look beautiful, I tell her. She blushes. Where have you been? He'll tell you later. First he needs to change and clean up. She swings me around and lightly shoves me toward my room. Back in a minute, I say and head into my bedroom. I get changed comb my fur, brush my teeth, and head back to the party. Hope is back, and she and Meadow are opening presents. Hope eagerly rips open wrapping paper. Meadow is disinterested. She just goes through the motions. What's wrong, Meadow? The girl looks up with her sad eyes and says nothing. Cool. Thanks, Uncle Cody. She holds up a blue sweater. You like it? It's so great. Thank you. Hope hugs him and adds the sweater to her pile of open presents. Meadow holds up a green sweater. What do you think, Ed? She shrugs and sets it down. What? You don't like the color? Meadow walks off and pours herself a cup of punch. She sits down on the couch, alone. Don't mind her, I tell him. She's always like that, now. I move to the couch and sit next to her. What's wrong, I ask. She looks at me like she always does, with a sadness in her eyes that breaks my heart. She hugs me. You missing Ma and Pa, I ask. She nods her head. Tears stream down her cheek. I miss them too. Pop Pop comes over. Everything okay over here? We're fine. She's just missing Ma and Pa. Pop Pop pushes me aside and sits next to Meadow. It's okay. I miss them too. Every single day. He leans over and hugs her tight. She clutches onto him and cries. What are you guys doing over here? Come on, cheer up. It's a party. She pulls Pop Pop to his feet and forces him to dance with her. The uncomfortable look on his face is priceless, and even Meadow can't help but smile. I stand up and look for Pumpkin. I approach her. You want to dance? Thought you'd never ask. We move to the center of the room. I love watching her dance as her face lights up. Her smile is contagious. It makes me feel warm inside, content. I look over at Meadow as she sits alone on the couch. I call Billy Bob over. Hey buddy, I say, go ask Meadow to dance. I can't dance. Doesn't matter, just do it, I say. She doesn't even like me. No one does. Do it anyways. Nice. Thanks, sis. We watch as Billy Bob asks Meadow to dance. 
She shakes her head. No. He looks over at us, shrugs. It was a nice thought. She lays her head on my shoulder, and for a moment, it feels like everything is right with the world. I see Meadow pat the seat next to her, and Billy Bob sits down. She doesn't say anything, but I see her grab his paw in hers and holds it tight. She smiles, if only briefly. Billy Bob looks uncomfortable, and it makes me smile. The party goes on well into the night, and after everyone leaves, we clean up. I fall into a peaceful sleep. Chapter 13, The Secret Laboratory I'm awoken by a loud rapping at my bedroom door. What time is it? Time for you to get up. Let's go. I get out of bed and slide into my favorite overalls. I'm coming. I meet her in the kitchen. No one else is up yet and the place is silent except for the sound of Pop Pop snoring in the next room. We dive into the water next to the living room and swim to the surface. Hey, where are you guys going? Tell you later, okay buddy? We dive into the big muddy and swim across. We get out and cross the deadlands to the big oak tree. The whole way we are wary of being followed by snakes, but no one is around. Good morning, kids. The professor calls down from the tree. Good morning, professor. Do you have any news for us? He flies down from the treetop and lands softly next to us. He retrieves the cipher from the trunk of the tree. Okay, I think I might have figured it out. Really? He rolls it out and we all look at the cipher. Okay, look. See the tea under the tomato? We both nod. I think we take the tea from tomato. Then we take the O from the bone next to it. I don't understand, I say. I do. We take the first letter from the first object, then the second letter from the next object, and so on. That's right, Hope. So, what does it say? I ask. The professor flips the page over, and there is scribbling on the back. I worked it out here. We glance down, and in his handwriting are the words, Your heart is the key to unlock the secret. I look long and hard at the words. What does it mean? I ask. That's what I was going to ask you. Your heart is the key to unlock the secret? What the heck does that mean? I have no idea, I tell her. I'm not sure either. Sorry. No, it's okay, Professor. You figured it out. You're a genius. I'm no genius, Hope. But I'm glad I could help. Hope begins to walk away. Where are you going? I ask. I have an idea. I thank the professor for his help and follow my sister across the deadlands. Where are you going? Back to the Weeping Willow, she says and dives into the big muddy. We swim downstream until we near the tree and climb out. We shake ourselves off and walk up the shore. Hope sits down on the flat rock that hid the cipher. Your heart is the key to unlock the secret. We sit in silence and ponder the meaning of the message. I stand up and start looking around. I'm not even sure what I'm looking for. I look under rocks and sticks. I climb up into the willow and look around the area, hoping to see something heart-shaped. You see anything? Nothing yet, but I'll keep looking. Hope searches around. Look, I say. I lead her to the trunk of the tree. What's that? In the trunk of the tree, there is a small, heart-shaped hole. I try poking a stick into the hole, thinking it might be a button. But nothing happens. Hope stops and looks around. What are you looking for? I ask. Just making sure no one is watching us. Why? Because I think I know what to do. She reaches behind her neck and unclasps the necklace Pa gave her just before he died. She pulls the necklace off, and there in her paw is a small heart. It's made of silver and glows in her hand. Pa gave this to me. I remember it like it was yesterday. Hope takes the locket and pushes it into the heart-shaped opening in the tree trunk. It fits perfectly. We stand around, waiting for something to happen. Nothing does. I thought that would totally work. Me too! There is a loud thud and Hope and I stand back. Way back. From the trunk of the tree, a door emerges. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Let's go. 
We move toward the door. It protrudes from the trunk and Hope touches it. The door swings open. Now what? I ask. We enter. She replies and walks inside. I'm not going in there, I say. Suit yourself. Hey, not without me, I say and follow her in. We shut the door and are engulfed in darkness. That was a great idea. Now what? The room fills up with flickering lights and there is a loud hum. What's happening? I ask. Identification, please. Who's that? A scary robot. Let's get out of here. Identification, please. I reach for the door but can't find a knob. We are trapped. Hope, we've got to get out of here. Hope, approved. There is a loud clanking noise. Then the room starts shaking and we begin to move. It's an elevator. An elevator? In a tree? The elevator continues to descend down. Where are we going? I ask. Like I know. The room continues to move. And I grow more anxious by the second. The elevator stops and the momentum throws us to the floor. We dust ourselves off and stand in front of the door, waiting for something to happen. It doesn't open. Now what? I ask. Stop asking questions I don't have any clue about. Sorry. We begin to search the elevator for buttons or for a knob to get us out. Beside the door, a panel lights up. Identification, please. I yell at the robot. Who are you yelling at? You're so dumb. Well, if you're so smart, get us out of here. I intend to. She bends down and looks at the panel next to the door. Oh, I see. She leans in. A green laser shoots out of the panel and scans her eyes. Welcome, Hope. The door opens. Hope leaves the elevator. The door begins to shut, and I move quickly to get out before I am trapped. Wow, look at this. She is smiling from ear to ear. Above us, lights begin to turn on, and the room comes to life. I look all around us. There is scientific stuff everywhere. There are flashy electronics, beakers, Bunsen burners. Where are we? I can't believe this really exists. She walks around the room, inspecting everything. You can't believe what exists? The secret laboratory. I don't know what that is. Look around you. This is it. The secret laboratory? Yes. This is where Pa did his most secretive work. Stuff he didn't even want his partners to know about. What kind of secretive stuff? All kinds of stuff. She stops in her tracks. Wait a minute. What? No. No what? She searches around frantically. What are you looking for? Something that I didn't believe actually existed. You mean, like this laboratory? She moves to the corner of the room and stops. There is a big computer with a large console. No, it can't be. There is a door next to the computer with another panel that looks like the one that was in the elevator. Hope leans down and it scans her eyes. Welcome, Hope. A door slides open. Inside is a magnificent looking machine with a thousand bright lights and colored wires poking from it. We step inside. Attached to the machine is a helmet with dozens of wires coming out of it, feeding into the big machine. This is pretty cool. What do you think it is? Hope runs her hand over it and turns to me with a look of astonishment on her face. I think it's a time machine. I look at her like she's lost her mind, which I'm pretty sure she has. A time machine, I ask, wary of her slipping sanity. Yes, a time machine. I remember him telling me stories about it when I was young. I didn't believe him. I just thought it was another one of his fanciful stories. I don't believe it. I wonder how we turned this thing on. Are you serious? You think this is a time machine? Yes, of course. And she stops. Do you know what this means? I think it means you're slowly losing your grasp on reality. Good one, Stinky. It means if this thing works, we can go back in time. And, I say, starting to catch up, go back in time and stop our parents from being murdered. Exactly. I stand there, stunned. There's only one way to find out. I decide, there and then, that if there's a way to go back in time and save our parents, that we have to do it, no matter what. 
and with that decision, we are thrust into the most dangerous and exciting adventure of our lives. One that could change everything, change our lives forever. But, could we really go back in time and save our parents? Continue the exciting adventures of Rain and his family in the second volume of Beaver Tales. Here's Rita, out soon. Theme music by I Have No Idea, the band. Song title, theme song to a TV show that doesn't exist yet. Extra voice recording by Jason Todd and Leon Stevenson. This project wouldn't have come to life without the amazing talent of all of the actors involved. Credits. I'm David, and I play Professor Kaufman. I'm Ayla, and I play the role of Hope. This is G-Morph, and I play Dreadnought. My name is Carrie Ann Malderig, and I play Penelope. My name's Virginia, and I play the robot voice. I'm Kara, and I played Curly and Soda Snake number three. I'm Paula, and I played the fat kid. This is Josh Ransom. I played the characters of Farmer Anders and Mr. Constantine. I'm William, and I play Uncle Cody. My name is Brian. I played Sheriff Johnson. I'm Valerie, and I play Nana. I'm Lynn, and I played the part of Buzzcut. My name is Henry Pershesny, and I played the Fat Snake and Paw. My name is Janine, and I played the Skinny Snake. Hi, I'm Vivian. I play the part of Soda Snake number one. My name is Robin, and I played Rosemary. I'm Kirsten, and I played Freddie. I'm Pam, and I play Fanny. <laughs>